Network team. Pepsi Cup Baseball from Bruce Stadium in Canberra, the new kids on the ABL block, the Canberra Bush Rangers, face up to the firepower of the big hitting Brisbane Bandits. The Bush Rangers are yet to record their first win in the ABL and are desperate to show the league they're no easy beats in the world of big time baseball. And later, highlights from around the country, player profiles, a chance to pick up great prizes in our Rookie of the Week competition. Stumbles and fumbles from the US majors, and much, much more from the show that gives you the big picture on the Australian game, Ted's Pepsi Cup Baseball. Hello and welcome to Pepsi Cup Baseball here on Network 10. I'm Matthew White. Thanks for joining us. During the next hour, we'll take you around the country for all the action of this weekend in the Australian Baseball League. Our main game features the ABL's new team at their new home here at Bruce Stadium. The Canberra Bush Rangers have relocated from Melbourne. They're chasing their first win of the season this weekend. Their opponents, well, they don't get any tougher than this. Warren Smith, the Brisbane Bandits, at this early stage of the season, already shaping up as championship favourites. Matthew, the fact that Brisbane have only lost lost one out of their first six games tells you something about their chances for a title this year in the Australian Baseball League. They're out to improve on that record against the Bush Rangers tonight, who lost all four games to the Wavy Reds last week. They want to improve on that. The man to look out for for the Bush Rangers, however, is their centre fielder, Lou Hill. He smashed two home runs against the Reds last week and is hungry for more. So we've got an appetite for big hits. As usual, the away team will bat first in this game. The Brisbane Bandits batting lineup looks like this. At bat first is Homer Bush, the second baseman. He's their leadoff hitter. Peter Buttram is at bat second. He's at right field. The third baseman will bat third, Dave Nilsson. Fourth is Ken McDonald, the designated hitter. At bat five is Ron Johnson, the first baseman. Bat six, Grant McDonald, the center fielder. Leon Glenn, the left fielder, is at bat seven. David Foxover, the shortstop, will bat eight. And Tony Thompson, the catcher, will bat nine. And here's how the Bush Rangers line up in the field. The left fielder is David Van. At center field is Lou Hill. And at right field, the rookie, Dennis Grubb. At third base is Gary Wales. Roger Burnett is the shortstop. At second base is Troy O'Connor. The first baseman is Matt Everingham. The catcher is Mike Figger. And the Bush Rangers starting pitcher is David Simpson, a 30-year-old right-hander. He was a member of the Waverley Reds team that took out the Australian Baseball League's first championship four years ago. He's on an overpowering pitcher. He rely on his control to make things tough for the Brisbane hitters. The new playing field in the Australian Baseball League, Bruce Stadium at Canberra. The Raiders are gone. The Bush Rangers have arrived. And so have the Brisbane Bandits. And this field has been transformed from one of rugby league's finest to easily one of baseball's best. And we start the game at the top of the first with Peter Buttram at bat after Homer Bush grounded out at first. Buttram is now the second hitter. Has a swing at his first pitch. A big hit down to centre field. Lou Hill's back at the fence and takes the catch. The Bandits, two up, two down. And a nice piece by Peter Buttram here in the top of the first inning. Taking David Simpson deep, but he must have had butterflies for a moment there, thinking that one might have been out of centre field. That brings Dave Nilsson to the plate. Strike one on Nilsson. A swing from Dave Nilsson. He picks up strike two. Simpson said he'd rather pitch Nilsson out instead of having to work around him. The one and two pitch is outside. Now he's got a chance to get Dave Nilsson sitting down and retire the Bandits without scoring. Nilsson grounds it out again to first. Matt Everingham picks it up. Simpson goes over. Nilsson does sit down. The Brisbane Bandits are scoreless at the top of the first inning at Bruce Stadium. And the Canberra Bush Rangers will now come up to bat their lineup. The leadoff man is centre fielder Lou Hill. At bat second is Roger Burnett, the shortstop. Brendan Edwards is at number three. He's their designated hitter. The cleanup man is catcher Mike Figger. At number five, Matt Everingham, the first baseman. Gary Wales, the third baseman, will bat six. At bat seven is Troy O'Connor, the second baseman. 
number eight is left fielder David Ban. The ninth batter is Dennis Grubb, the right fielder. And the Bandits fielding lineup looks like this. At left field is Leon Glenn. The center fielder is Grant McDonald. Peter Buttram is the right fielder. At third base is Dave Nilsson. The shortstop is David Foxover. Homer Bush is the second baseman. Ron Johnson is, will be the first baseman. Tony Thompson is the catcher. And the bandit starting pitcher is Andy Paul. He's a 22-year-old right-hander from the Milwaukee Brewers organization. He started the American season in the Rookie League, but was promoted to play in the single-A level Midwest League towards the end of the year. He has a fastball in the high 80s, that's miles per hour, and also throws an unusual pitch that is a combination between a curveball and a knuckleball. We will see him use to great effect. Andy Paul has already got one of the Bush Rangers out. Sends Everingham back to first. And many Everingham sort of leaning towards second base there, almost too late to get back to first base, even though he was still standing up. A good move from Andy Paul, who obviously has a good move to first base. Two balls, two strikes. A piece from Troy O'Connor out to left field. Leon Glenn with the error. Tried to take it too easy. Matty Everingham has moved to second. And Troy O'Connor gets a single off an error. Well, an incredible play there from Leon Glenn. Just drifting across from left field. He was there in left center field in plenty of time to make that ball. Had the glove there. The ball hit the glove. We'll see it now. Troy O'Connor hitting a lazy fly ball out to left field. Leon Glenn comes across and just misread it. The ball hit the top of the glove. Didn't even look like going in the glove. And the center fielder comes around to uh, try and clean up the play. So runners first and second now for the Bush Rangers. And a good situation for David Band coming to the plate. Uncharacteristic from the Brisbane Bandits. Normally rock solid. Especially out there in the outfield. Leon Glenn just seemed to take it too easy. David Band, the left fielder. Down low, ball one. And in baseball, when someone makes an error, the players will say he booted the ball. Leon Glenn's nickname is Boot. David Ban at the plate. And Ban looks very relaxed. He does indeed. He looks very confident at the plate. He's got runners in scoring position, a chance here to do a great deed for his team and knock in a couple of runs. Two and two. Paul hasn't paid much attention to the runners so far. The pitch is a ground ball back to Paul. He sends it up to second base. Relay over to first. The double play. The Canberra Bush Rangers retired in the bottom of the second, scoreless after having runners on first and second. We'll have more action on Pepsi Cup Baseball right after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to Bruce Stadium in Canberra. Leon Glenn is at the plate for the Brisbane Bandits. One strike on him so far. Has a swing. It's a fly ball down the left field. David Band couldn't clean it up. And Leon Glenn moves around to second base. Well, Leon Glenn made an error in the bottom of the second inning to give the Canberra Bush Rangers a base runner. He replies in kind there with David Band coming across. Couldn't make the grab on that line drive into the gap between left center field and stands up into scoring position at second base. None away for the Brisbane Bandits here in the top of the third inning. No home runs here yet. No score on the board at the top of the third. One ball, one strike now on Thompson. And in that series between Canberra and the Waverley Reds last week here at Bruce Stadium, there were six home runs hit. So obviously Bruce Stadium conducive to home run hitting. One-on-one -on -one pitch to Thompson. A big swing. Hit deep to left centre. Lou Hill goes back to the fence again and makes the catch. The Bandits are two down, but they've now got a run. Leon Glenn comes home for the Brisbane Bandits' first run of the night. And at the top of the third, they lead the Canberra Bush Rangers one run to nothing. The first pitch to Peter Buttram is a strike. Simpson with plenty of work to do. Homer Bush goes out a bit wider. Simpson with the throw, safe at first. The 0 and 1 pitch to Peter Buttram is out wide on purpose so they can pick off. It doesn't work. Homer Bush goes to second base. 
A wild throw from Mike Figgett. Well, the Bush Rangers guessing right there with the pitch out. What they do is try and guess when the base runner might try and steal second base. They guess right with Mike Figgett giving the pitch out sign to David Simpson. The throw was plenty of time, but just too high. And the Bush Rangers fielding hurt them last week. They gave up nine errors in that four-game series against the Waverley Reds, and it's costing them, then, them again here tonight. One on one now, and Peter Buttram down low. Top of the third, Brisbane Bandits leading 1-0. Two balls, one strike on Buttram. Make that two. And that's where Simpson needs to be, on the outside corner down low, giving the hitters nothing to swing at. Simpson concentrating on Buttram. Two and two. A high pitch. Buttram has a swing. Down to left field where David Band will make the catch. And the Brisbane Bandits at the top of the third have a one run to nothing lead over the Canberra Bush Rangers. In the bottom of the third, the Bush Rangers were in a good position with safe hits by Dennis Grubb and Brendan Edwards. With two down, it was up to Mike Figger to bring the runner home. Ideal opportunity for the Bush Rangers to take the lead. Figger has a big swing. And that's now strike two on him. The number four hitter, usually the guy with all the power. He may not hit for a high average, but he's the guy they're looking for with the home runs. He hasn't done that so far this year. He's only two for 11 at the plate against the Waverley Reds last week. 23-year-old right-hander from Tampa Bay, a catcher with the Yankees organization. That ball's into the dirt. The runners will advance to one base. We've now got runners on third and second. Both runners in scoring position. Mike Figger, one ball, two strikes. Bottom of the third, the Bush Rangers are behind by one run. And that's the problem with that knuckle curveball that Andy Paul throws. Occasionally it's going to get wild and out of control. That one bounced in front of the plate. Tony Thompson doing a good job getting down and trying to block it, but it's squirted away from him. The runners advancing a base, a big threat here for the Brisbane Bandits. Roger Burnett is now at third base. Brendan Edwards is at second. Mike Figgers at the plate with the one and two count. Andy Paul throws him the pitch. That's a right field. Foul ball. And it's amazing what a couple of runners in scoring position can do to bring the crowd back into the game. That's what the Bush Rangers need right now. And there's two batters down so far for the Canberra Bush Rangers at the bottom of the third. Andy Paul feeling the tension, sends that one wide. The count's now two and two on Figger. Figger showing a lot of patience there. That was a pitch he could have easily swung out and been struck out on. Showing a good temperament not to take that pitch. Runners on third and second. Two and two on Mike Figger. A swing, he goes down swinging. And has some words to say to Andy Paul. The top of the fourth inning at Blue Stadium. The Bandits lead one run to nothing over the Bush Rangers. And David Nilsson will start the batting for the, for the Bandits. Nilsson with his first pitch. Has a hit. That's gone way down right field and over the fence. A home run from Dave Nilsson. His first pitch. Oh boy, somebody sent for a taxi to find that ball. That one is way back and gone. An incredible piece from David Nilsson. I was going to say before he swung at that one, if you're ever going to give up a home run to David Nilsson, you may as well do it when he leads off him because it's only going to be one run. That was an incredible piece, and that's the problem with someone of his experience at the major league level. Anytime you make a mistake up in the zone where this pitch is, that was a hanging curveball from David Simpson and David Nilsson making no mistake, taking that way back to right field. And with the Brisbane Bandits keeping their 2 0 lead intact through the bottom of the fourth, we pick up the action in the top of the fifth. Homer Bush is at the plate. Simpson seems keen now to get on with the action on Homer Bush. He's given the message to Tony Thompson at first. Little look over the shoulder. The pitch to Bush. 
push sends it out to center field. Lou Hill goes back but can't make the, the catch. Tony Thompson is coming around to the home plate. And he'll score. Thompson comes home for the third run for the Brisbane Bandits. And Homer Bush gets out to second base. A rising line drive hit by Homer Bush. Lou Hill making some good ground going back into the gap in the right field. Couldn't come up with a play. Played the carom off the wall nicely, but Bush standing up at second base drives in his first runner of the Australian Baseball League season. And at the top of the fifth, the Bandits now lead three runs to nothing. This is Peter Buttram. Buttram, a big swing on his first pitch, sends De Dennis Grubb way back in the right field. The Bandits have another runner crossing the home plate. Homer Bush comes home. And Buttram goes out to second. Two runs already in the top of the fifth. It's gone from 2-0 to 4-0 for the Bandits. Peter Buttram is at second base. Nilsson, another swing, big hit, centre field, home run number two for David Nilsson, a two-run homer. Two swings tonight, two balls out of the park for Dave Nilsson. That major league experience is paying off here in the ABL. His fourth home run of the season, we saw Berry throw the curveball for a strike on the first pitch. This one looked like another curveball down low, but Nilsson extended those arms and took this one way back, landing just in front of the seats on the hill in right centre field. An enormous hit from Nilsson, and gee, isn't he in a marvellous hitter to watch? He's just incredible at the plate. He can get that bat through the ball so quickly and take it deep any time he likes. In the bottom of the fifth, Bandits pitcher Andy Paul hit a rough patch, walking three bush rangers to load the bases with Brendan Edwards at bat. And the tension building here at Bruce Stadium. The bush rangers may be six runs behind. They've now got a chance to bring in four. Andy Paul, one and two. Edwards in the dirt. Dennis Grubb comes home for the bush rangers, their first run. Grubb slides into first. Andy Paul put it in the dirt. The catcher couldn't take it. The Bush Rangers are now five behind. We've got Lou Hill at second at third base. And Roger Burnett is the man at second. Andy Paul. Edwards sends it out to right field. Lou Hill comes home. And also comes home is Roger Burnett. The Bush Rangers are now three runs within the Bandits. And coming to the plate is a man who is due. Mike Figger, the catcher at the plate. He has only hit safely two times out of 13 at-bats so far this season. A ground ball out to second base. And a collision at second base. Homer Bush has collided with Brendan Edwards. And Edwards is down hurt. So is Bush. Oh, boy, they hit heavily. Edwards was going to second base. He looks as if he's knocked out. He's absolutely cold. Homer Bush hasn't moved either. I don't think he was going to be able to turn in time and make the double play to second base, but he was definitely going to be thrown to first. Here we see the hit. Mike Figger, the ground ball to Homer Bush. He comes down, tries to glove the ball with one hand, looks up and sees a steam train in Brendan Edwards. Absolutely shirt front at him. And both those players are sick and sorry. That's incredible. Brendan Edwards, a big man, he stands about six foot two and weighs about 200 pounds or around about the 93 kilo mark. He looks okay, he's winded though, he's breathing and sucking in the deep breath. David Nilsson checking him out, They're having a bit of a joke, he looks okay. Edwards getting up to his feet, he's okay. Well, of course, now there's some controversy as to what's going to happen here. The Bandits management infuriated with the umpires. Well, and Dan Radisson blowing up here. Homer Bush is OK. He's back on his feet at second base. What Dan Radisson is arguing is that the runner, Brennan Edwards, has to give way to the fielder who's making the play. The runner has to avert the fielder and give him every chance to make the play and throw the ball to first base. So Dan Radisson is arguing that Brennan Edwards should be out. It looks as though Radisson's claims are falling on deaf ears. Mike Figger is standing at first. Brendan Edwards has made his way, apart from that little obstruction, the second. Maybe we might see some dirt kick. Well, Dan Radisson is certainly making his feelings felt. 
and I think he might have been ejected by home plate up on Mike Stevens there. He signaled towards the to the to the clubhouse. I'm not sure what the situation is here. I don't know if radisson has been thrown out of the game or not. I don't think he has been, in fact. I'm sure Mike Stevens would have signaled a bit more clearly that Radisson would have been thrown out of the game had that been the case. But Mike Dan Radisson is steam. But in the wash-up, Edwards stays at second. Figure is at first. There's no men down. And the Bush Rangers trail by three runs, six to three in the bottom of the fifth. Matt Everingham at the plate has the all-time record in the Australian Baseball League for hitting three home runs in a single game. Dave Nilsson might push that record tonight. He's already got two. Two-to-two two pitch, a swing by Everingham, sends it out to centre field. The Bush Rangers hold up, and it's now bases loaded. We've now got runners on third, second, and first. And this is Gary Wales. Sends it out to right field. That's a safe base hit. One run scores. It's now 6-4. Another run scores. 6-5. And here comes the tying run at the plate. Tag. He's out. 6-5. The Canberra Bush Rangers pull it in again. Plenty of action. Box is going. Edwards sends it out to right field. Peter Buxton. Rangers and the Bandits. Edwards, a single out to right field. He's at first base. The Bush Rangers are, but it's six apiece. And an eerie hush falls over Bruce Stadium with Steve Hinton at the plate. A hit from Hinton out to left field. They're going to try and bring the run home at the home plate. Tag safe. Peter Buttram scores for the Brisbane Bandits, and they now have a one-run lead at the top of the seventh. The Canberra Bush Rangers fans aren't happy. Peter Handel has replaced Barry. Now the full count pitch, a big hit, and a home run. Way over left field, the Brisbane Bandits will score three runs. Steve Hinton moves around to third. Dave Nilsson is already at home plate. He scored. Hinton now comes home. Ron Johnson has come up with a three-run home run in the final inning here at Bruce Stadium. It's now ten runs to six in favour of the Bandits. That might be the final nail in the coffin for the Bush Rangers. Peter Handel here hits a fastball. He was behind in the count. David Band gave that one up. Didn't even attempt to go back to the track. That was way back onto the hill to the left of the seats on the other side of the stadium. Ron Johnson, a three-run home run. Bust the gap open now to four runs. The Bandits look home. Hill's a cool customer. You not only want to get on base, you want to bring his other two runners home. And there he goes. Sends it down to centre field. We've got one running scored. The second round holds up. That makes it 10-7. Troy O'Connor scores for the Bush Rangers. It's now a three-run game. The Bush Rangers are trailing 10-7. That's Lou Hill at first base. There's the pitch to Burnett. We've got another run scored at home plate. It's now 10-8. David Van is the man who comes home. A single by Burnett. He's at first. Lou Hill moves to second. And now the go-ahead run of the play for the Bush Rangers. That man is Brennan Edwards, the designated hitter. He is three from four tonight. Three safe hits. He struck out in the first inning, though. But Roger Burnett, a great job driving in David Ban. Burnett now three from four also tonight. A double and two singles. A sensational performance from him. And here's Brendan Edwards for the Canberra Bush Rangers. Runners on first and second, one man down. It's now a two-run game. Edwards sends a high ball to centre field. Grant McDonald, no, Homer Bush. An easy catch at second base. 
That one deceiving under the lights. Brendan Edwards popping it up. It looked like it was heading out towards centre field. Holding up in the slight breeze that is blowing in from out there. And Homer Bush making the easy play for the second out here in the bottom of the seventh inning. The Bush Rangers down to their last out. Now it's up to Mike Figger. Figger sends it up to second base where Homer Bush picks it up and retires the Canberra Bush Rangers here at the bottom of the seventh and that's game. So the Bandits pick up this match, 10 runs to eight. Quite an incredible game. We'll be back with more Pepsi Cup baseball right after this. And quite an incredible game here at Bruce Stadium. 18 runs were scored. The Canberra Bush Rangers fighting back from a 6-0 deficit to push the Brisbane Bandits right to the very last inning. The Bandits eventually winning 10 runs to 8. Three home runs were scored. Two of those belong to our player of the match, Dave Nielsen. Dave, another win for the Bandits, but it was almost the one that got away. Yeah, we jumped out to an early lead and uh, the Bush Rangers come back. They really battled and tied the game up and uh, looked at the end like they were going to come back again. But we, we kept it going and, and we finally come through. Two home runs, you must be very happy with the way you're swinging the bat. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way things are going. I've kind of struggled a little bit. I've been on and off, but uh, tonight was a good night for me. What about personally, the season you had in the American League with the Milwaukee Brewers, even though the club struggled a little bit, you came on very strong in the second half of that season. Yeah, well, that's what I look at. Um, my first half was really bad. I had injuries and it kind of snowballed, but now um, the second half went really good and hopefully I'll go back next year on a positive note. Congratulations, well played tonight. All right, thank you. Last week, Canberra's Lou Hill entered the baseball history books by becoming the first player to hit a home run here at Bruce Stadium. This week, Hill, a key player in the Bush Rangers lineup, takes another step to the top in our MasterCard player profile. When he threw the breaking ball and I hit it good, I saw the ball heading towards the uh, stands and my heart just kept pounding all the way until I got to uh, home plate. Canberra's latest hero, Lou Hill, explaining how he felt hitting the first home run at Bruce Stadium, the home of the Australian Baseball League's newest club. The Bush Rangers hope to ambush their competitors with the help of their four New York Yankee imports. The main thing, you know, playing for so many years I have played, you know, a lot of guys uh, look to me you know, to be a leader. And uh, being a leadoff batter, you know, everybody looked up to me to um, get on base, to get things started. And uh, taking fly balls in the field, you know, the guys look at me and uh, want to know how, you know, the right step to approach the ball and what to do in certain situations, and uh, as well as on offense. You know, to get on base, uh, still on bases, the guys look at me on uh, what type of lead to take and, uh, you know, how to take the lead. The major U.S. competition is Hill's own. And last season, while playing A-ball, he was heading the race for the batting title until a broken finger suffered in the final month saw him finish third. To break into the Major League, Hill says you need to be working on some aspect of the game every day, which is a lot easier for him in Australia. Playing baseball uh, you know, in the States, we're living in northeast Ohio, you know, where it snows in the wintertime and uh, we have no facilities to work out. And uh, they gave me the opportunity to come here to Australia and uh, play baseball and uh, get all the experience just before I go back to spring training in March. Catching a high ball and working on his base running are just two of the aspects which Lou believes will improve while in Australia. Uh, in Australia, I like to you know life to be a lot better. You know, I need to improve on a lot of uh, minor details. You know, such as uh, stealing bases and uh, hitting the breaking pitch. That was the biggest uh, problem back in the States. You know, the fastball wasn't no problem, just the uh, breaking pitches. Here in Australia, you know, you see a lot of pitchers don't have the fastball, but they have the great breaking balls. And uh, here, I can uh, learn to achieve the breaking ball. Playing in Australia is one way. Lou believes he'll be able to repay the support of his mother and her family, who brought him up after his parents divorced when he was very young. There's always a baseball glove or a bat man around the house. And I um, got a chance to play baseball in the backyard with my uncles. I wanted to be just like them. When I got to the age to understand baseball, I started playing more and uh, kind of hard, you know, living with a single parent. When my mother come home from work and had to take me to the game and I uh, sit there and watch me play. But it all paid off. Here I am now playing uh, professional baseball. Judging by his early season form, 
Lou will provide the inspiration to a budding baseballer from the national capital, the same way his family did for him. Lou Hill, certainly one import making his mark on the Australian Baseball League. OK, time now to go around the country and check the highlights from our other games. And Warren, our first game comes from Adelaide's Norwood Oval, where the Giants are aiming for a top four spot against Sydney. Matthew, last year the Blues went to Adelaide for a crucial three-game series and lost all the games they played. They can't afford to do that this year after last week's disappointments against Brisbane. When a line drive by Adelaide's first baseman, Jay Kirkpatrick, who plays with the LA Dodgers outfit, set up Australian Andrew Scott for the first run at the bottom of the first, the home crowd were entitled to feel they were in with a chance. Especially when at the bottom of the third, Giants captain Barry Barnhill, with two down, struck a three-run homer off 18-year-old Sydney pitcher Anthony Brasher, giving the Giants a 4-0 lead. run homer by Sydney's Craig Stone saw the visitors peg back the lead to just two runs at the top of the fifth. However, at the bottom of the fifth, once again, a Jay Kirkpatrick line drive enabled Ron Mora to make home from first. But at the top of the sixth, Sydney cut the Giants down to size when Jason Townley blasted Darren Fidge off the mound with a three-run homer to tie the score at 5-all. But left-hander Sean Conlon wasn't the answer, as a Brian Murphy two-run homer made the score 7-5, which the Giants were unable to peg back. And stay with us, we'll have more highlights in action on Pepsi Cup Baseball right after the break. Welcome back. Carrara Stadium on the Gold Coast. This is the scene of our next feature game. Warren, the East Coast Cougars hoping that home ground advantage gives them the edge over Melbourne. Matthew, the Cougars are yet to win this season after six games, but they've got four games at home now, and Adrian Maher on the mound are winners and far away. Left field, Stuart Thompson opening the scoring at the bottom of the first with a stand-up double which brought Peter Hardis and centre fielder Peter Vogler home, giving the East Coast Cougars a 2-0 lead over Melbourne Monarchs. Still trailing, a pop fly by the Monarchs' David Buckthorpe. This brought Keith Gogas to the plate. However, John Deeble was unable to bring Gogas home. At the bottom of the third, with a Gold Coast side leading 2-0, Peter Vogler hit a stand-up triple. A single to left field put outfielder Ron Carruthers on first. However, attempts to advance failed through a great throw by catcher Peter Yates. And a slow roller by Craig Koenig was to no avail due to great fielding by Paul Gorman to end the inning still down by two. And at the bottom of the fourth, the lead increased through Peter Yates.
However, at the top of the fifth, with bases loaded, the Cougars pitcher Scott Robinson was replaced by Mark Montgomery. The Premiers took advantage of the pitching change with Keith Gogas getting the Monarchs on the board despite protestations from the home team. At the top of the sixth and trailing 4-1 following a Stuart Thompson homer, the Monarchs weren't about to lose their crown. First through David Buckthorpe. Then a Richard Bag double levelled it at 4-all and John Diebel brought two more home for the final score, Monarchs 6, defeating East Coast Cougars 4. We'll have more results and highlights shortly, but first, we're off to the show, America's Major League, where not everything goes as planned for the superstars of baseball. And to think, those guys get paid. Still to come, more highlights and a full list of results from this weekend in the ABL. Welcome back, and now here's your chance to be part of the action. We'll be giving away great prizes throughout the season. All you've got to do is be our Rookie of the Week. Each week on 10's Pepsi Cup Baseball, we're giving you the chance to win big in our Rookie of the Week competition. Later in the season, we'll be announcing the winner of a family trip flying United Airlines to Chicago to see the home of the Chicago Cubs and the stars of this summer's hottest baseball movie, Rookie of the Year. This week, there's a pair of Reeboks in your size up for grabs just by answering a simple question about the main game and calling 0055 60203. And stay with Pepsi Cup Baseball throughout the season to win more great prizes, including exclusive preview tickets from Hoyts to see Rookie of the Year. And our question this week, who was the starting pitcher for the Canberra Bush Rangers? To enter, dial 0055 60203. We'll keep our lines open for an hour and we'll announce our winner next week. And congratulations to Russell Beerer of Redcliffe in Queensland, who was our first Rookie of the Week. Russell, we'll be in touch to find out your shoe size for those classic pair of Reeboks. And now to our last set of highlights. And this game comes from Waverley Park in Melbourne. Warren, the top two teams in the championship, Perth and the Reds. Matthew, what a clash this will be. The two league leaders undefeated with four wins each. The difference could be how Waverley's pitchers handle the power-packed Perth batting lineup. <laughs> At the top of the second, with bases loaded and infielder Andrew Spencer on third, a line drive by Ben Utting saw the home side open up first. But if the Reds thought they were king of the jungle, their claws were about to be trimmed when the Heat's Greg Jelts, who'd starred last week with two homers, continued the good form with his line drive bringing one home, locking the scores at one apiece where it stayed till the fifth inning. <laughs> But as the visitors, who last year finished second, mounted the pressure, the Reds started to commit some errors. <laughs> Greg Jelks was once again involved when, despite his fly ball being caught, Heat went 3-1 up. By this time, Perth were burning. First, when this piece of fielding got rid of Scott Dawes, 
and the message wasn't getting through either to Ben Utting. At the top of the sixth, the Heat's John Moore sizzled, while teammate Michael Moyle was having trouble keeping a grip on things. But the Reds weren't the only ones finding it hard to hide from the Heat. And don't worry, Johnny, it only hurts. With runners on first and second, Perth extended the lead to 5-1, which the Reds could not make up. We've almost made it to the home plate here on Pepsi Cup Baseball. We'll have more right after the break. And now it's time to check the full list of results from this weekend and see how your team fared. Next week, we're at the home of the Parramatta Rugby League Club, Parramatta Stadium in Sydney, where the Blues are playing host to the East Coast Cougars. At Parry Field, the Perth Heat will take on the Canberra Bush Rangers, the Brisbane Bandits will host the Adelaide Giants at the RNA Showground, and the Battle of Victoria is at Altona Stadium, where the Melbourne Monarchs take on the Waverley Reds in the local derby. And there's plenty more sport coming your way on Network 10. Straight after the show, all the highlights of the Wallabies tour match against the French Barbarians. Then at 2.30, we're off to Coolum on the Sunshine Coast, for round three of the Uncle Toby Super Series. Of course, sports tonight, every night after the late news. And next week, from the Concord Golf Club in Sydney, the Australian PGA, live at midday, Saturday and Sunday. And we'll be back next week with another edition of Pepsi Cup Baseball, an early start on Sunday morning, 10.30, right after video hits. On behalf of Warren Smith, I'm Matthew White. We'll see you then.